Just in case you didn't feel old already, Shrek turns 20 today, which is just crazy. This is such a great movie, memes aside. And while I prefer the second one, this first movie is so iconic, entertaining, and should definitely be rewatched whenever you get the chance. I only say rewatch because you've seen the movie, and if you haven't, where the hell have you been for the last 20 years? Leave. Go watch it. Okay, now that that loser's gone, we can talk about celebrating the occasion. I could throw a Shrek-themed party, maybe share some of my favorite memes with you guys, or throw my only green shirt on and talk about Shrek Super Slammy if that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Let's get something out of the way early on. I'm not very big on fighting games. The only series I actually play is Super Smash Bros, which I do play quite a bit of. It's not that I don't like other fighting games, I just can't get into them. They're so complex, which is a good thing. I love strategy in games, but I don't want to take the time to learn combos in the right order to press certain buttons to be good at a game. That's why I like Smash Bros so much. There's tons of strategy to the game, but it's not super difficult to learn everything. It's fun from the start and only gets better as you improve. Now, why do I bring up Smash Bros? Well, because this game is a Smash ripoff. Shrek Super Smash, I mean Slam, not even subtle. Now, the game's entirely 3D, which the Smash Bros. series clearly isn't, but a lot of things feel very inspired by Smash Bros., mainly how each match is structured. Rather than hitting an opponent off stage for a kill, you have a slam meter that fills up as you land hits, and once you land enough, you press Y to perform a move that, if aimed properly, will give you plus one slam. This game's kills. At the end of the match, whoever has the most slams wins, and the stat screen even has the same layout. And I can't help but draw similarities between the slam meter and the smash ball. When you get your final smash or slam attack and land it, it's a kill, a plus one for you and a minus one for your opponent. Then in Ultimate, they added a smash meter that works just like the slam meter. Not saying they stole this idea, but it's quite the coincidence. The gameplay itself is quite a bit different though. The only notable thing in common is shielding and dodging with the triggers, which is actually a very familiar feeling. Whenever I play a fighting game that has a block or shield map to a different button, it feels off and I continuously press the trigger by mistake. Now I know that's only the case for someone who only plays Smash, but in terms of the feeling of the controls, it really does a lot to make the game feel more, well, familiar. That's where similarities stop with controls. The face buttons let you jump, grab, do a standard attack, and charge a more powerful move, all of which work great. The grab the button also lets you pick up certain things on the stage, which you can throw or shoot at your opponents, but there's no items besides those, which I like. The items in Smash Bros. can be fun for a couple matches, but as soon as things stop going your way, it's so annoying. When a player gets control of items, it's not that hard to keep that control and get an easy dub. Losing to items is the most infuriating thing, which is why I mostly play with them off, so the lack of items in Shrek Super Slam is pretty nice to be honest. The throwable set pieces are plenty and never feel OP. The projectile shooting items are a little annoying, but super easy to dodge and punish with. When you shield, it bounces the bullet back at your opponent, which makes them plenty fair. Some of the stages have hazards and other things to interact with for damage as well, but there's not many of them and they're pretty fun. This aforementioned familiar feeling works really well for a one-off license game. Asking the player to learn tons of button combinations and get used to an entirely new feeling game is absurd and would scare away the majority of players. Why learn the ins and outs of an entirely new game when it's going to fade into obscurity in a few years and never get a sequel? They took some inspiration from a successful fighting series, Smash Bros, and gave it a 3D twist, which is perfect in concept and they did surprisingly well in execution. I've tried a decent selection of 3D fighting games and none of them have really wowed me, and the only one I've talked about previously on this channel was Tom and Jerry War of the Whiskers. This game's simple and easy to learn to play, which is good for a licensed fighting game, but it goes too far this direction and leaves the game as nothing more than a button masher. When a game's not very complex, players will just spam buttons and do just as good as someone who's been playing for a while, which I really don't like. Yes, it gives everyone a chance, but I prefer more strategy than that, but asking a player to learn a ton is, as mentioned earlier, too much for a licensed game. There's a sweet spot in the middle that I think Shrek Super Slam hits right on the money. It's more complex than just button mashing, but not overly complex to the point that it's daunting to new and borrowing some core gameplay elements from Smash Bros makes it easier to understand and get better at. Being 3D makes it a bit more difficult to grasp, but that's mainly what the game is asking the player to get used to, not tough to pull off combos or unfamiliar mechanics, so it works. War of the Whiskers has the same obstacle for players to overcome, the unfamiliar 3D space, but it doesn't build off another game and thus had to oversimplify the gameplay to keep it an approachable experience, which makes it less desirable to go back and play. Shrek Super Slam's approach works flawlessly for the game, and to be honest, makes it way more replayable than even Smash Melee, as that game's been improved upon with the each installment. Yeah, even Brawl. If I'm gonna go back and play a fighting game from this console generation, it's probably gonna be Shrek Super Slam, and I'm not kidding. It wasn't made obsolete by a sequel and has so much more to offer as a standalone game. There's a story mode, which is split into eight chapters that each consists of a fight with a brief premise. The setups can be pretty humorous to watch play out, but the mode as a whole doesn't add much to the game. An hour of gameplay tops, but at least there's something. Then there's Mega Challenge, which is a map filled with different missions and tournaments, and is where the majority of this game's content lies, and it's a lot of fun. It's pretty much a ripoff of the event matches in Melee, but they're still a blast, and they're all fun to complete and improve your overall skill. And that's pretty much it for modes, besides trophy room, training, and me melee. Yeah. 
Look, I never said this game was very unique. It's a simplified version of Smash in 3D, but it works so well that it really doesn't matter. There is so much to love about this game if you're a Shrek fan. Pretty much every character you could ever want is here, including Humpty motherfucking Dumpty. And each character has a unique moveset and actually cool costumes. Where Melee had different color palettes, this game makes Shrek a puppet and Donkey a pinata, which is really cool. The stages are super well made and enticing too. Not every place from the movies is here, but there's a decent chunk of them and they all feel different. It's great. I will admit, the character models look pretty strange and not very good, even for 2005, but it honestly just adds to the feeling of wackiness that I love this game for. All of this stuff is very nice, but the reason this game is worth playing is obviously the multiplayer goodness it offers. Hell, it's why I bought the second Xbox controller. It's simple to approach and familiar gameplay makes it easier for newcomers to get into and doesn't give the more experienced player too big of an advantage. Though, knowledge of movesets really does help and button mashing doesn't do all that much, so it encourages all players to be strategic with their quite basic and quick to learn moveset. I played this game with multiple people and we had a blast every single time. Most matches were pretty close and just watching Shrek beat the shit out of Donkey was hilarious. This Shrek skin, or should I say layer? <laughs> the game has is really what brings it all together and makes it the hell of an experience it is. I've said it before and I'll say it again, a licensed game's commitment to the source material is what makes it worth playing, but in this game's case, they most likely achieved this on accident. The Shrek license wasn't really taken advantage of in this game, but its attempt at it is kinda cringy and meme-worthy, which is exactly what Shrek has become. Now don't get me wrong, the first two movies are sensational in their own regard. I'm not taking away from those films, I'm referring to the way Shrek continues to stay in the public's eye, meme culture. This game does this on accident because it doesn't really feel like Shrek, but it's such a goofy attempt at it that it fits right in with the current public image of Shrek. When I say the name Shrek, you think of this, and this, and this. Not this. Back when this came out, it just looked like garbage. Now it's funny to look at. I think this is one of very few games that's gotten more replayable over time. Not only does it fit in more with today's Shrek culture, but its gameplay is much more replayable than its foundation in Smash Melee. If I want to play Smash Bros, I'm playing the latest installment, but if I want to go back and play a fighting game of this console generation, I'm undoubtedly picking Shrek Super Slam. There's no sequel, this is the only one of its kind, which makes it way more deserving of going back to, and you definitely should for the 20th anniversary of Shrek. I cannot believe this movie turns 20 today, and I really can't believe how decent Shrek Super Slam is. Like, seriously. In terms of being a solid game representation for Shrek, it's not. The license is hardly taken advantage of, but that's what movie tie-in games are for. This is just a fun and wacky fighting game with everyone's favorite Onion Boy. It's not great, and it might not even be good, but at its worst, it's mediocre. I was really worried about that pun not landing well. I guess you could say I was a nervous Shrek. Sorry, I don't want to ogre do it with the puns. Okay, I'm, I'm done for real. Sorry. See ya. Thank you so very much for watching this video. If you like what you see, drop a like, and if you want to see more and help the channel grow, please subscribe. If you're looking for another video to watch after this one, I highly recommend my Spongebob Revenge of the Flying Dutchman video. I made it a couple years back and it's a pretty bad game, but it was a 20th anniversary special for Spongebob and I think you'll enjoy it, so be sure to check it out.